Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. said same city. Ladies and gentlemen, well, you can see it written on the screen. That's Debbie Durst. How are you, Debbie? <laughs> I'm doing swell, Alex. How are you this morning? I'm I'm, uh, I'm uh, getting along, you know, getting older, got all the aches and pains, <laughs> got the 70 doctor's visits a week, you know, for one thing yeah. or another, you know. I got a yep. little balance problem, so they got to test the ears, and then I got some neuropathy, so they got to test the feet, and then, oh, you know, geez. but not like Will, <laughs> okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, you well. Know, I hate yeah. to complain, not like Will. <laughs> well, yesterday was quite the adventure. By the way, let me just say, Debbie uh, is related to Will Durst. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're his sister. Uh, he's my half of everything. Your half of everything. Very <laughs> nice. Oh, isn't that lovely? Oh, isn't that sweet? That's half a, of everything. That's an awe moment. <laughs> yeah, I keep saying it's half of everything, mister. Yeah. And and then he says, not one damn dime. <laughs> yeah. so. But anyway, I, I, but anyway, and Will had a, had a stroke about a year ago. Wow, a year ago. Yeah, about a, a year and almost almost thirteen months. Almost wow. thirteen. Yeah, well, and I finally got to talk to him the other day. Yay! Uh, he so, said he got to talk to you. He was really really happy. Something I plan to do on a regular basis because you know I had a lot of trepidation about talking to him because I didn't know what to expect. Ah, you know. Yeah. And what yeah. I got wasn't what I expected. I got a person whose mind is sharp as a tack. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, who, uh, 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 you know, speaks fine. His timing is there. <laughs> yep. You know, all the all the things uh, that uh, make a comedian a comedian. Uh, <laughs> I was amazed. I, I did not expect what I found. I thought I'd find somebody just a little bit more, you know, I mean, he's been lying in bed for a year for crying out loud. Right. That's, yeah. lo that's longer than I do at any given time. <laughs> Uh, yes, yes. Well, you know, it's uh, he, he's so totally there. His mind is there and uh, his mind has always been there. It was a little hard to communicate sometimes during the early days yeah, in the right. ICU. Right. And uh, there, there was a bit of confusion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember the second stint in ICU. There was there were many stints in ICU. Yes. And many yes. stints in him. I don't know. <laughs> I for a while he was looking like an extra off the set of Dune. He had so many wires and things God. coming out of his head and his nose and his good Lord Almighty. Wow. Uh, but yeah, there was about two weeks when he was in the ICU where he thought he was in Chicago. You know, they have those cognitive things that come and ask you yeah, every day. Yeah. All day. <laughs> Who are you? When's your birthday? Oh, what city are we in? And and for about two weeks, he would keep saying Chicago. Why that? I, I don't. Maybe. Well, he, he is originally from he's a Milwaukee native. Oh, OK. All right. And Chicago is the next big city. And he spent a lot of time there. So I'm figuring, all right, he's kind of back home and he'll work his way to the West Coast sooner yeah, or later. Yeah, sooner or later. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it, it it all it all came back just a little what they call the brain fog thing. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, if that's the least of it, I mean, come on, he had a stroke, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll be with doctors or strangers or in rehab or something, and then I'll say, well, you know, the stroke, and he'll say, I had a stroke. <laughs> like, the sad, the like, sad thing about it is, Debbie, the, the thing that bothered me most of all is that he's got it. He still got it, okay. When I'm talking, yeah. when I say got it, folks, I mean he's a comedian. He's got the timing. He's got the. He can speak fine. He's got the chops. 
all of that. It, almost, oh. almost this person who wishes he had a stage to do something on. Oh, yeah, you it's, know, it's dragging him and, nuts right And now. then the, the fact that there are certain parts of his body that aren't working, that right. then becomes the problem. Yes, and and, and uh, it's it's just, it's horrible when you your body won't do what you want it to do. But slow, he calls it the brain is his tower, and the tower keeps sending signals to, yeah. to the rest to the left side of his body. Yeah, and the the arm he said the arm is ready to join the party. Yeah, so you know he's got really good movement of his fingers. Good, and uh, he's he, he's exercised for this week from the uh, occupational therapist was to pretend he's reaching for a piece of candy and bring it to his mouth. Yeah. And he, he's doing pretty well with that. Yeah. Doing pretty well. So the, the arm is doing pretty good. And it's all about the shoulder, mostly. Mm -hmm. Because when you sit and you okay. do nothing, your shoulder muscles kind of, they call it a shoulder drop. Yeah. So then you got so, the leg. You got the leg is the other problem. Then you've got the leg, which is more of a, more of a problem. But it's, he it's says he's, he, he says they put him in a walker. And uh, that he can. Yeah, no. Yes, no. Yes, uh, no. Okay. Yeah. See it, and and that's partially my fault because I had the walker left over from my hip replacement surgery, and I'm thinking, oh, great, you know. God, do you realize what we're talking about here? Strokes, hip replacement, neuropathy, <laughs> loss of balance. Uh, <laughs> yeah. God. It, you, good afternoon. Welcome to old people talk. Well, no, I, I actually, my wife and I wanted to start a podcast called "Nobody Wants to Listen to Old People." <laughs> Because it's that, like you just disappear, you know? Right. Like nobody right. pays attention to you. You're old. No, you're old. You, you, <laughs> right. you walk in. I, I walk into the local Starbucks. The kid goes, hi. And all of a sudden it's like, well, guess what happened to me today? <laughs> and there's an entire, it's like, they just want to take your order. They don't want to know. What's they don't want to know. They're just that old <laughs> lady who comes in with the with the funny hair. Yeah. 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 It's kind of crazy. But, you know. Uh, the leg is coming along, though. Yeah. Yesterday, we, we spent about an hour or so at the orthotics department at UCSF, mm -hmm. and he's got two ankle braces now. Oh, okay. Uh, that, that are, uh, they call them AFOs, the a ankle foot orthotics. Oh, okay. Is what AFO stands for. And it's a thing to keep his ankle straight because the ankle starts to turn. Yeah. And then as we're starting to make him stand more and more in physical therapy, mm -hmm. it, it uh, helps to have your foot flat on the ground. Yeah. So he's learning to put uh, weight on his on his. Leg. I don't know if I know, I mentioned the last time we spoke that they had him in a harness mm. uh, uh, to, to hold most of his weight while he's trying to stand. I see. We're yeah. off the harness now. Oh, really? Oh, harness good. History. Yeah. Yeah. So... The harness is history, and he's got a knee brace as well, one of those little ones that you can crank up on the side to say how. Yeah, my wife had one of those when her when her knee got broken. And yeah, it has like. So, you know. so there's more and more practice, and he does practice putting his weight onto the walker, but he's not at the walking stage yet. Yeah. Uh, but he has graduated. He's actually working his core muscles and standing from a sitting position. Yeah. So he's working on standing up. Well, this, you know, it, awesome. It, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, you know, I mean, look. The way I look at it, from what I saw, okay, and what I heard, we could probably put him in a wheelchair and set him on stage. Oh, sure. You, you know, and he'd be fine. He'd be able to get everything across to the audience and everything. But right. I don't think he. I think there's a certain pride. He doesn't want to do that, does he? No, he doesn't want to be seen like this quite yet, and I don't blame him because his hair is crazy, wild, long all over. Oh, the place. I saw it. it yeah, yeah. And, and he he had this thing he, before the stroke where he was not going to cut his hair until there was a new president. Mm -hmm. So you know, everyone is kind of hoping <laughs> that there is a new president, and then we can actually cut his hair, and he'll look like a normal human being again. But um, I, he's not ready to go on stage. Yeah. Yeah. Because we were talking the other day that this would be the time when he would be doing his one person show. Yeah. And, every week. And he said, yeah, and I've got all kinds of, but the, the material is all up here and there's nothing on paper and the, it's not, you know, there's no form. Well, to you know, it. the thing is, the thing is that I told him, I said, look, you know, you can, it, 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 it's a terrible time for you to have a stroke because this election is just full of material. Okay. But, 
The other part of it is, except for the writing, excluding the writing, just talking about on stage, they said, right. you wouldn't be working anyway. <laughs> yeah. You know, so you, you timing, actually picked the perfect time to have a stroke. <laughs> yes, yes. The timing is just about perfect. By the because, time he's walking, Corona will be beaten, okay? So. Yes, and stages will be open again. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so we'll, we'll have to figure out a big boffo premiere, now, you know, yeah. back to the stage for Mr. Will Durst's show. Now, he absolutely adores you, as you know. Wow. Well, I, I pay him enough. <laughs> and he said to me the other day, without even breathing heavy, he said, oh, she's the funny one in the family. Oh, he says that all the time. It takes the pressure off of him, you see. <laughs> well, well, you are funny. You, you're just well, funny as a person. You, you, you exude a certain funniness. Yeah, I, I can't turn it off. I can't turn it I off. I mean, you know it. You're kind of goofy looking, but that's 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 why we go into comedy because we're goofy looking. Because <laughs> we're goofy looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're if you're really handsome, you have a really hard time doing comedy. Yes. Yeah. There are the really handsome comedians, and nobody takes them seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're 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 too good to look at. It's like, what are you doing here? Why aren't you on television? Something like that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, uh, you know, you you have been over the years one of the funniest people around, and he just says you're. He says she's funnier than I am. You know. Yeah. Well, well, we kind of help each other with the funny. Yeah. Because as an improviser, there yeah. are things that I can say that just won't fit in anything that I would ever do. Yeah. So it's kind of okay. Like, well, so you're, this is a really funny line. You take it. So you're both comedians. So are you constantly? Trying to make each other laugh. Well, not constantly. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are things that we we see that and observe that are just hysterically funny. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do is look at each other. And go, did you see that? <laughs> did you get that? <laughs> Especially now, when when I, uh, you know, he gets out and we go to physical therapy, and there are all these people out, and and people are are, are strange, you know, to begin with. A, B. Uh, there's a certain amount of people that you can have in the lobby of the therapist's office, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they have a little sign saying you can only, and then one day he said, do I count as one person or half a person? Cause this part of the body doesn't work. <laughs> and, and there was a woman sitting across from him and she didn't know what to do. She didn't know if he was being serious or funny or, and then we had a little incident yesterday oh really oh well, yes uh we went back to to the ucsf so they could tweak the uh the afos mm -hmm. that they're brand new it's like a brand new pair of shoes you got to wear them in mm -hmm. but with these you can't really wear them in because he's not standing so there's a certain amount of shaving and drilling and stuff to make it more comfortable so it doesn't squish your foot mm -hmm. and he tends he's a slider he's a slider slidey mcsliderson and what do you mean he's I a slider? Fix him in the wheelchair so he oh. wouldn't slide out. Oh, I see. Okay. We're in the we get out of the elevator and I look at him and all of a sudden he's like this. <laughs> and I'm like, you're falling. He looks. He turns to head. Turns his head to look at me and as he does that, boom, he slid right off of the wheelchair onto the ground. And, and then I'm thinking, great, this is this is going to be a very funny little film someday. And and I'm alone. We're in the basement of the UCSF thing where not a lot of people go and there's his foot with the uh, the brace on still in the doorway of the elevator and I'm thinking all right the door's going to shut on his foot and we're going to have another set of problems so I started yelling help help <laughs> and, and uh, luckily the person we were going to see her office was right on the other side and she came out and went, oh, my goodness, what happened there? And immediately, without missing a beat, Will goes, she pushed me. <laughs> 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 and that was his line. Everybody we saw for the rest of the day, she pushed me. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So so we got him back into the wheelchair. Don't those things come with seat belts? No, they don't. And there's a thing about that. You can get straps to, like, we have found a strap to, like, buckle him in. Mm -hmm. But um, and this has been a problem because he's a slider from way back. He's a slider. A, a, so yeah, he just you know, shoop, and he slides right out. And uh, supposedly you're not supposed to buckle people in because it restrains their movement or their freedom if they want to get up out of the wheelchair and do a runner 
they can't. <laughs> I don't yeah. know how yeah. that. Yeah. Well, works. I mean, you're in a wheelchair to begin with because you can't get up and run away. Exactly. You know, so, so it would seem logical see... that if some people do slide, I'm sure he's not the only slider in the world. Oh heck, oh, no. Okay. <clears throat> no. You know. So. Yeah. Anyway, we have a brand new little one of those webby belts that I can secure him. Now yeah, yeah. To feel better. Months later, we we are in the. Uh, Is there an airbag in front of him? Just <laughs> <laughs> there should be. <laughs> I know, folks. We're laughing about a guy with a stroke, but so is he. So yeah. you know. Yeah, he he laughs about it every day, every day. So and and that's that is helping a lot too to maintain his sense of humor. Yeah. Well, I told him that I, I understood somewhat about his leg and the fact that it's there and he can't make it move, okay? Right. Because when I went in for my prostate seed implantation, they did a spinal on me rather than put me out because they said, because of my age, I'd rather do a spinal. So they did a spinal, and that kills everything from the waist down. Not that I've needed it in years, but from the waist down... <laughs> gone right and yeah. i suddenly I, had a, I have a friend who's a paraplegic and i said i suddenly realize what his life is like every day it's there but you can't move it right you know and and that's got to be a great frustration you know it, it, it's very frustrating <clears throat> very frustrating for will there are so many things that he wants to do but then there's the reality of the situation and then i keep telling him well look you know it's going so so slowly ever so slowly but look at where you were even two months ago mm -hmm. where you couldn't even it's move going to arm. appear slow at the time it's going to be much faster when you look back at it right yeah a couple of months ago he couldn't even move well, his arm. as i say i have a friend uh, who yeah. calls the show all the time his name is jeff and i've gotten to know he and his wife pretty well and about 10 years ago i think he had a stroke and to this day, he still can't read, and he, he has slight, you know, you can hear it slightly when he talks, uh, that he hasn't, he hasn't got all that back 100%. So the right. fact that Will has got as much as he's got going for him right now, yeah, the only big. thing, the only thing, you say the hand is going good, the only thing that's not working is the leg. And, yeah. and the leg is not his comedy, okay? No. He's, not, he's not a physical comedian. Well, you know. we've seen many people do sit-down comedy, <laughs> and I'm sure. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, he would be great for that. But the the uh, the goal now is to actually get him up and moving in a walker. Yeah. And as soon as he can get into a walker, then, it's, then you know, we can take you anywhere, do anything. Here's the question I'm, I suppose you ask every day, and that is, when's he coming home? Heck if I know. Heck if I really, know. Really, they, they don't know yet, huh? No, no. Because he's been in the hospital for a year. He told me that the the hospital bill came to something like a million. Oh, uh, it's more than that. It's more like a couple mil. Couple, a couple of mil. mil. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he was in ICU twice. Yeah. So three weeks the first time and six weeks the second time. It's funny. They bill you the two million and then they send it to Medicare who says it's only worth $3.50. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And because they're signatories to Medicare, they have to take whatever Medicare is willing to give them. So right. that, you know, it's it doesn't really come out to two million. It's just so they can write off the rest of it, you know. Right. I would I would love to see that. I, I have a binder that is literally this thick. It's the biggest binder I could buy. Yeah. And uh, all of the statements that come from Medicare and our supplemental insurance. Mm -hmm. I, I've been, you know, putting them all in the binder. It's like, okay, we. This is what it cost. This is how much we paid. Yeah, but you know something. Yeah. Uh, you shouldn't have to even have supplemental. We should just have Medicare for everybody. All yeah. everybody. Everyone. You know. Everyone. Uh, it's I mean, so crazy. It's nothing. Insane. Nothing wrong with it. But I mean, because I mean, even though. Um, uh, I'm sure you didn't wind up having to put out $2 million. Uh, you had to do whatever the copay was. Who knows what that is? Uh, because Medicare doesn't take care of 100%. It only takes care of 80%. So you've got to go out and you've got to buy that other uh, 20%. 
and that right. costs like that costs like three hundred and eight. Uh, this year it was three hundred and eight dollars a year a uh, month per person. Uh, I yeah, I'm not quite sure because ours was billed quarterly. Yeah. So it seemed like a lot to pay for two yeah. people, but huh. then you look at the bill and you go, "All right, twenty percent of this is still insane. well." No, I, I absolutely, but still, I mean, come on, you know, people are seniors like myself. They don't want to have to go for a three hundred and eight dollars a month for their supplemental because you don't want the advantage, because the advantage just doesn't doesn't cut it. And then you got to have prescription coverage too, right? You know. So I mean, but, yeah. So that's why we need uh, we need a whole revamp of that, and and why America can never every other country can get behind it. Every industrialized nation. Do you know the only two nations that don't have uh, health coverage for their population? Besides us. Besides us, there's one other industrialized nation. I'm sure you know. Uh, <laughs> oh, so this we're is going to amaze you. This is going to amaze you. China. China. You would think they're communists, right? Ah, right. You would think. Uh uh-uh. uh. But no. They, wow. They're working on it. They're working <laughs> on it. At least they're working on it, folks. Yeah, at least they're working on it. We're not doing anything. Yeah, we're not doing nothing. But you know, uh, I mean, thank God you you guys were insured. You know. That that's all I can think of is like I would get all of these uh, the not invoices statements saying this is how much this cost, yeah. And I'm just sitting there thinking, my God, what about people who don't have insurance? What I love it. I love it though when you who get aren't the, old enough to be in Medicare. Well, I love it when you get that thing that says at the bottom it says the amount you might owe your doctor. <laughs> yeah, the amount you may be billed. The amount you may be billed. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, uh, you didn't have the SAG after insurance, did you? Uh, the supplemental, yes. The supplemental, you, you, but you did. You have you didn't have the senior, or did you have the senior? Yeah, yeah, we had the senior thing. Well, you know they've done away with that. Yes, yes, they have, and now I've got to go shopping. I know, and we've been doing work. exactly the same thing, and I am mad because it's going to jump my cost up. I think it was like it was about two thousand dollars a year. Yeah, for for two people. For two yes. people, and that included great that. dental, $2,500 dental and everything. They just, yeah. but goodbye. We don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. You know, uh, we can't you afford know. it any longer. Well, yes, you can. You know, I mean, the one thing about SAG that was always considered a great union was their medical plan. You know? Right. And now that's gone. That's yeah, gone. gone. And gone. with it, you have actors like uh, Norman Lloyd. You know who Norman Lloyd is? No. He was the guy in Saboteur, uh, Alfred Hitchcock's Saboteur, falls off the um, the uh, Statue of Liberty. Yeah, yeah, that was Norman Lloyd. Well, okay. Norman Lloyd's still alive, and he's 105 years old. He's the Ooh. oldest living actor in SAG, all right? He's not going to have health insurance. Jeez, Pete. Uh, he's got to go out and do the shopping just like you and I are doing now. Yeah. Because that plan, that plan we were in, was a terrific plan. I mean, it, was it was a fabulous plan. Yeah. And, and now, yeah. <clears throat> so, did you make an appointment to talk to someone on the phone, or are you going to do it online? No, I, we, we have somebody privately that we're going to to get us the... He's an insurance salesman and deals with stuff for seniors. Oh, okay. Because I wasn't, you know, um, the only thing you get by going with... They send you over this thing called Via Benefits. And the only right. thing that happens there is they can access what's called a health retirement account that you have supposedly at after at at SAG, and after, and the health retirement account. I asked them, well, how much would I get a month? And they said, oh, you'd get nine dollars and ninety five cents a month towards your health insurance. Really? And because I, ours I, is more. The HRA. <clears throat> they they told me it would be at least ninety five dollars. Did you have that much in in SAG at this point? Um, I I well, Will has got tons of Aftra. Yeah, and then I I did I did one film. <laughs> I did the Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. So I I have no idea really. Wow. Well, because I uh, I, they I asked them. They said nine ninety five uh, when I called the union, and I said, "What's the most you can get?" And they said nine ninety nine ninety five. You know, 
I mean, if it were ninety nine ninety five, I'd think about going with that. Although it's not a lot of money, it still pays for some of it's still it. Something, know? yeah. yeah. But uh, they told me it was nine dollars and ninety five cents. So, oh, that's just crazy. You know, I don't care. You know, I just uh, I just want the insurance, and I, and I don't like this company they pawned us off on because they're nothing but a bunch of insurance salesmen. You know, right? So, ah, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah, and you know, what a racket. Something we got to deal with. You know. Yeah, that's okay. That's mm -hmm. all right. It beats the alternative. How you feeling otherwise? I'm good. You know, I, I, I'm good. Mm -hmm. Despite having to come home and have multiple shots of sake last night <laughs> after, you know, oh, my God, he's on the floor. What do I do if nobody comes by? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Because you know, there's no way I could pick him up by myself. Do you it see was, him every day? No. 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 Uh, I, I've been seeing him on average three to four days a week. Mm hmm to get his uh, all of his rehab appointments in. Yeah. And then if uh, if there's nothing going on one day of the week, I'll go down and uh, just stand outside his window and talk to him. Oh, okay. It's yeah. like like a drive-through. <laughs> yeah, about like a drive-through. Hey, how's hey, it going? Hey, listen, we've run out of time here, Debbie. God, oh, this is so nice talking to you. I love talking to you. You're just fun. Oh, You're just uh, fun. It's, it's a pleasure to talk to you, Alex. I miss you. I miss you. Yeah. yeah, and we both talk about somebody we love a lot, you know, yeah. which is Will. Yeah. And and I, it's just so, taboo. you know, I, I'm going to call him again, I think, next week. Uh, that would be great. And, and if you want I'm gonna make I want to make it a weekly deal because I, you know, I what's what's he got to do? <laughs> Nothing really, except blast that super cool TV I got him in his room. Oh, like really? Full blast. Because oh. he'll Facetime me, and the television is on. Of course, it's the news. Yeah. And and it's like, honey, I, I don't want to yell above the television. If you could just reach over for the remote and turn it down. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's Debbie Durst, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, hey, Will, so much, Will, Will Durst, oh, better half. Yeah, I did want to mention that the GoFundMe is still up. Okay, so you go to GoFundMe and you just put in Will Durst, right? And it'll... Yeah, so go to GoFundMe, put in Will Durst. I'm going to have to put a stair lift in the house and ADA yeah. the bathroom and all kinds of fun stuff, just so it's nice and comfy when he gets back. Well, uh, you know, everybody, just whatever you can, you know. Uh, yeah. And a lot of people have responded to them. Tons but, of people have responded, and I am so verklempt at all of the yeah the good the goodness and the love that is out there for Mr. Durst. Well, we do love you. Yeah, that's Debbie Durst, ladies and let's talk again in a couple of weeks, okay? Yes, please. I yeah. love doing this. Yeah, I love doing well. this. Okay, sweetheart. <laughs> talk to you later. <laughs> Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, okay, there we go. Debbie Durst and uh, uh, yeah, we, I'm trying to get all the audio just right and everything. And uh, uh, we, we're going to check in with her every now and then. I love talking to her. She's just fun. She's fun. And if you can, go up, the, go on to, um, um, where is it? Uh, uh, go fund me and put in Wilders, the name Wilders, and uh, you can donate a couple of bucks, five bucks, ten bucks, you know, whatever. It all helps uh, to make their lives a lot easier. And they are two people that have just been so much a part of San Francisco comedy that they really deserve your help. Okay? All right? Okay. Anyway, um, let me see here. Let me. Uh, um, let me see here. We're gonna go to the. Uh, we're gonna start taking the uh, the uh, the uh, calls. Uh, let me admit him, uh, and uh, we're letting some people come on here. We're waiting for them to join us. Uh, uh, waiting for Charlie Wallace to click. Okay, there we go. Let me see here. Go to gallery view, and um, I'm. Just, let's see here. Charlie's picture isn't coming up. I wonder why. Oh, there we go. There's Charlie. Okay, there's so far. That's our Zoom panel. Hello, guys. How are you this evening? Hey. Oh, it's very nice to hear what you said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, um, uh, that's Jeff, and uh, that's Charlie. And um, one week to go. 
One week to go. Yes. Yep. Can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm just well, destroyed. I'm by... hoping. I'm hoping. Hello, Robert. How you doing? Robert, how you doing? Good. How about you? Oh, okay, good. Um, yeah, we got a week to go. I already went out and voted. Uh, did a little early voting. We did it on Sunday. I have a video I'm going to run, but I'm probably going like, to run it on Thursday because I've yeah. got so much other stuff I had to run first. And it's just short. It's like nine minutes. Of us in line. It took us an hour. Uh, the line was that long. Uh, but uh, it was there was something nice about it because everybody kind of had a really nice feeling and there was a nice kind of camaraderie between all the people there. And then uh, the people, the election board, were, they were passing out water to people who needed it in line and some people came by for some restaurant with sandwiches, free sandwiches for people. And it was, it was and after it was all over, Marjorie said, you'll see it on the tape, she just said, Boy, I'm telling you, she said, I really just feel good about that. You know, I feel good that we did it. And uh, I felt good that we did it, too. So, you know, it's mm. good. That's good. Um, but uh, how about uh, how about you, you people? Uh, how are you feeling about it? How do you feel it's going? I think it's going to win. It's going to be a landslide. Do you think it's going to be a landslide? Yeah, I think it's going to be OK. I think it's going to be fine. You know, um, I, I don't think that I, I don't want to say this because you don't want to. There's an old term, old Jewish term called Kanahura. You don't want to Kanahura it, which is like, you know, uh, speaking about something and then it doesn't happen because you're so, you know. But I mean, it doesn't make much sense that it wouldn't work out. You know, um, so I, uh, uh, I don't know. It's just all the indicators are there. I mean, this massive early voting. And by the way, what's great about the early voting is I think it's people who don't want to mail in their votes. I don't think the mail in's going to amount to much. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I mean, we had the opportunity to mail ours in. We even had the opportunity to walk ours over to the voting place, not wait in line, and put it in a in a box, mm -hmm. uh, which I noticed was a garbage can. But that's, uh, you know. Bum bumps. Uh, <laughs> but Marjorie didn't want to do that. She says, I want to vote. You know, I said, fine, let's go vote. Mm -hmm. So we went and we voted, and uh, 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 there was a little less of a line the Sunday we went than the Saturday, but supposedly in New York City, over 200,000 people voted in New York City on Saturday mm. and Sunday. And I think by the time we're through, probably a million people will vote in New York City. That's pretty damn good, you know. Have you, any of you, you've done, you, you did it early, right, Charlie? Yeah. Yeah. And how about you? Uh, Same thing. Jeffrey? We're very early. Yeah. How about you, Jeffrey? Have you... Done it yet? You can do it in New Jersey, right? I voted. Um, we voted by dropping our ballots in the box. But in Jersey, you're able to go online to see that they are in receipt of your vote. Like oh. you can track your vote, <clears throat> like you would track a package on UPS. Oh, and really? so our votes are are tabulated. Well, that that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah it's terrific. very convenient. You sign up to a website. It. Um, you use your voter ID number, which came on your ballot mm -hmm. as a means of, you know, signing on to this site. Yeah. And um, we dropped our votes off on a Monday, and I think they were listed on the website about five business days later. Really? Okay. So that's terrific. That's yeah. terrific. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, we should all know that our vote, our vote has been counted. Mm -hmm. You know, the, somebody uh, was saying, when we were, uh, Marjorie was saying it too, that the reason why we're voting, see, in New York, I mean, come on, uh, do I really need to vote? Come on. I'm, you know, I'm only going to add to the, the tally for the Democrats, which always, New York always goes Democratic. So, and that always gets boiled down into, what, 78 electoral votes or whatever. But I think this year I really wanted to go there because I wanted just my one vote to be registered 
So uh, when it's finally, they say, well, New York, so <laughs> many votes. The country, so many votes for Biden. It's a big fuck you to mm-hmm. Trump. You know, so your one vote kind of is a protest to yeah. him. Yeah. You know? um, In Connecticut, they have the same thing where you can uh, ask if they will send you a document that did they actually get our information? Yeah, yeah. And they did. Right. Of course, they didn't say who I voted for or who I didn't right. vote for. <laughs> But I remember. Um, in Texas, it depends on the county. Yeah. Uh, county by county, some counties you can track your vote, and Austin's one of them. So, well, there are two things you've got. A, you, yeah. You've got an incredible amount of people voting early in Texas. Am I correct about yeah. that? Yeah. Uh, I saw a huge number, and I also saw a huge number where uh, coronavirus cases are concerned. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're oh, by the way, ne- we're get we're gonna catch. Uh, California this weekend and Texas will be number one in coronavirus infection. And and is anybody yelling Just about the governor? Yeah. No. He's done. He's not no- on the ballot. He's done nothing. Nope. Do, do you think? Do you think he'll get elected to another term after doing this? Well, the problem is we still got two years before he has to be elected again. People will forget. Well, they might not forget because you got to remember that with people dying of COVID or even getting COVID, everybody knows somebody who has COVID, you know, or or got COVID and, or somebody who died of it. And that all comes home to roost Mm -hmm. for all the Republican candidates now out there. Um, I mean, it's really, it's pretty, pretty, Mm -hmm. pretty ridiculous, you know. Uh, I, uh, um, I just think that, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to jinx the whole thing, but I just don't see where Trump's going to pull this one out. You know, I mean, last time he won because some people went, well, what have you got to lose? Well, they found out. Yep. Yep. You know, uh, and also he was an outsider. And, and that kind of, some people had a romantic notion about the outsider becoming president. I don't know why you consider a guy who claims to be a billionaire and is a television personality an outsider, but they did. He's not an outsider anymore. He doesn't have that appeal anymore. Mm. Plus, you know, it's kind of like you go to see a comedian, and the next time you go to see the comedian, he does the same act, but you don't mind it because you want to hear all the hits, right? You know, mm-hmm. all the jokes you mm-hmm. loved. If you go a third time and he still does the same act, you're a little tired of it. Mm-hmm. Well, listen to him on the stump right now. He's doing the same act he did four years ago. There's nothing yep. new. He's replaced with lock her up with lock him up. And even as his, his lock her up back again, because he's got uh, the Michigan governor. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, there's nothing new. There's nothing original. And uh, he's, uh, I, uh, you know, we're all bored with him. And he's just not bringing anything new to the table. Yeah. Yes, Jeff. I still think there's a lot of people who just don't want to vote for a Democrat. Well, you know. And they will vote as a, if the Republican was a duck, they would. Yeah, well, I, yeah, but there are Democrats who wouldn't vote for any for a Republican ever, too, you know. And there have been some decent Republicans, you know. I mean, uh, I, I often said that if McCain ever ran, I would have a little bit of a problem because I kind of like McCain because he was a liberal Republican. But then he ran and he did such a bad job of it, and then the Sarah Palin deal, and I said, well, that's it, you know, I can't. I, I, in fact, I felt kind of bad for him because he had spent a whole life of, of dignity and had to have a compromise because he ran for president, you know. Uh, His biggest problem was that that lady who uh, from Texas, yeah. well, was from Arizona. No, you, know, you mean Alaska. Sarah Alaska. Palin. Sarah Palin, yeah. yeah. That's what I was saying, mm-hmm. Palin. The whole Palin factor kind of ruined him. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, you're right. There are people who just won't, won't vote Democratic. But you know something? 
if you're a Republican, let me make an appeal to you, okay? Um, he has ruined your brand, okay? Uh, if you don't get him out now, if he were to last another four years, um, uh, he, he would completely ruin the Republican Party. There will be no Republican Party. They'll have to change their name and move to another country. You know, I mean, it's just, it's, it's not, uh, it's not any good. Boy, my eyes are burning tonight. Uh, I, w I went to the doctor today. I went to the uh, balance doctor. Anybody here ever have one of these balance tests? No. Oh, is that fun? Well, it's, I did, it wasn't that it was horrible, but it just goes on forever, you know? First they check your vision, follows, you know, the first they do sounds in your ear. They're doing some kind of sonar in your ear. I you don't know mm. what it was. That went on for 20 minutes. And then the rest of it was a combination of getting me to um, look at dots on a screen. <sighs> and then after it, that was over, they blew hot air, cold air into my ears for a minute. Wow. And then had me rest and then had my eyes look at dots and stuff like that. And then they, then they put hot air in my ear. And after it was all over, he said, I don't think you got a balancing problem. He said, if you've got a problem, it's coming from somewhere else. He says, it's not your neuropathy because your feet aren't acting like that. He says, I don't know what it is. It could just be that you're, you know, that you've got a little something going on there. You know, he, he, he said, but it isn't an inner ear problem. And it isn't problems with your eyes. So I still, I don't know what it is, you know. And then I told him I was tired all the time. And I mentioned, I think it's I've got COVID fatigue. He said, that's going around. He said, you just, you just feel exhausted all the time. He says, he says, I feel it, you know. Uh, and, uh, but uh, it, it's just, it's, it's kind of interesting. Uh, the, the whole process they went through with me, and then you're then you're dizzy like crazy afterwards. You got to kind of rest for about five minutes in his office before you can get up and leave. Uh, so if you ever have a chance to have one of those tests, good luck. You know it doesn't hurt. You know nothing like that. It's just kind of annoying. <laughs> you know, kind of annoying. It's like. Uh, what was it when I got the prostate cancer? When they discovered the prostate cancer, they said, "Well, you got to have this, and you got to have that." And I said, uh, "Is this going to kill me?" And, they, and my doctor said to me, "Me, no, but it's going to be mildly annoying." Uh, and, and it turned out it was mildly annoying, you know. So much like Mike Pence. Much, much, much <laughs> like Mike Pence, exactly. <laughs> Did you see who was out on the stump today? Did you see, uh, um, um, uh, what's her name, uh, Malaria? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Boy, does she For read a, a she, second. She, yes. she reads a teleprompter as badly as Donald Trump, but with an accent. Yeah, I couldn't understand her. <laughs> well, no, what it reminded me was is when, uh, when he was making the movie Dracula, Bela Lugosi couldn't speak a word of English. And so they had all the, all the lines written phonetically on cue cards. And then he would just read them. And it was, good evening. I am Count Dracula. You know, <laughs> and that's about what she was doing today. She sounded like Bela Lugosi, you know, <laughs> because she's, re she's reading the damn teleprompter. <laughs> um, and did you see, did you see Obama? Oh, he, he was just, great. He just, cre you know, was, uh, Marjorie said, I think the reason he's going out there is he's the guy that's got to be the bad cop. OK, yeah. he's the one who's got to go out and say, Trump's a jerk. Trump does this. Trump does that. Trump right. is blah, blah, blah. He's a guy. I mean, the be his best line was he hates coronavirus because it's getting more press than he is. Yes. You know? I love that. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, he's very funny, but uh, he could get away with it because, number one, he's been so assailed and besmirched by Trump 
That's that, right. That he could say anything about Trump and everybody would say, OK, well, we understand why. Right. OK. And it gets under Trump's skin, too. Yeah, it does get under Trump's skin. You know, that's bugging mm. him. I would have Obama out every day. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they sit and waited for the last sprint to bring him yeah. in, you know. Uh, because he was he was the guy I think they sent around to areas, especially with black voters, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. kind of seal the deal, you know. Mm -hmm. And then of course, then you got Biden, and he gives a speech, and he says things about about Biden, about Trump, but he doesn't get nasty well, about it, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, I was thinking about it today. I've seen walking into the house today, and I went, I haven't seen anything like this anywhere. The most obvious bumper sticker you could create, and I haven't seen it. I don't know about you guys. Have you seen any bumper stickers that read "Dump Trump"? Yes. Really? Yes. Yes. Actually, not a not a bumper sticker, a, a, like a lawn sign. Okay, dump Trump. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because I yeah. I just thought it's so obvious. Yeah. Sure. You know, why people haven't done it uh, is beyond me, but I haven't seen it around. So good. I'm They've glad. had the the by Don, you know, Biden. Yeah. I said Biden. This is by Don. By Don. Biden. Did anybody catch the the tweet storm between the president and Sasha Baron Cohen today? Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> At some point, um, Trump called him a creep. And Sasha tweeted back, I'm paraphrasing, something to the effect of, I've been looking for um, been looking for a racist buffoon to use in one of my movies. And from what I hear, you'll need a job come January 20th. Oh, beauty. I love it. Why do we talk about our president tweeting? Oh, my God. Why do we yeah. talk about a president in the way that we do? But it's only that he deserves it. I, I've seen I, 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 don't, I don't do Twitter, but I saw some stuff that was forwarded, you know, on Facebook and stuff. It was like four in the morning, two in the morning. Are you kidding me? Yeah. I wonder, you know, I often wonder, does he write every one of his tweets? Or does he dictate them? Or do they... Does he like uh, make them up? Uh, they like in th at five o'clock in the afternoon. They sit around making up about twenty of them, and then somebody at night sends them out. I have no idea. No, no. you know I don't know. Uh, but uh, whoever it, does them can't spell that much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was there? Some line that Obama had about a president who you know sits on the couch all day and watches Fox and tweets. You know. That, that he does nothing else. Yes. Hello, Brian Ludwig. Hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I wanted to answer, come up with a possible answer to Mr. Neary's question why we have the president we have. The reason why we have the president we have is because, in my opinion, is because he is a manifestation, the end result of the toxic consumer culture, got to have it now mentality that this country has been. Uh, you know, experiencing for the last 40 some odd years. Mm, that's part of it. The other part is we ain't the smartest country in the world. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, we, we would like to think, oh, how bright Americans are. No, mm. yeah, no, no, we are not. Yeah. No, we don't and, even. But our, but our youth, the TikTokers, yes, they are very smart. Yeah. In spite of the open yes. racism, uh, in spite yeah. of the open racism, I'd say my grandparents' generation were, but. <laughs> we're That's... smart we're smarter i yeah, yeah i do i yeah. believe it uh, let me think about that for a second i don't know and, I, and we're accounted you know uh, not, they were us being an industrial you, though, powerhouse absolutely they were still well, i don't very, know how you make that assessment they were still very naive and politicians could put one over on them mm. you know i mean no. I, I think up until this point, we've said, hey, he's my, whether or not I voted for him, he's my president, and we stick by him any way we can, okay? And I think people have given up on that notion now, you know? I don't understand, even if somebody is a Republican, how they can stand by Trump. If they want to tell me, well, I'm going to vote for Trump only because he's a Republican, but quite frankly, I'm holding my nose when I do it, okay, I'll understand that. But they don't say that. They try to justify him. And that's the part that's kind of 
you know, and, I, and this coming out of people I would think are smart, okay? But apparently they're not. Apparently they're dumb. Well, they do it on the left, too. Though not as in great numbers, I'll give you that. The, left, the, ha- yeah, the, de- the left has a tendency to f- fall in lockstep, too. You know, I will agree with you. I mean, I uh, uh, the left has always kind of bothered me because if you don't mm-hmm. follow the prescribed lit- litany... Or lit- liturgy, uh, you're not you're not a, you're not a real Democrat. I mean, I used to be told when I'm serious by people who would call me up when I would like question something Obama did. I'd say it's even worse than that. You get called yeah. sexist and misogynist. Well, no, they, they forget it. Forget that. That wasn't a problem back then. Well, uh, I'm talking about now with no, but, uh, but, but, no, but what I'm saying is, is that they used to say to me, "Well, uh, you're no you're no liberal." I, I said, no, I'm not a liberal. I'm a leftist to begin with, and I, you know, I don't like being a liberal. I remember you saying that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, but, I mean, I would get assailed by people. Oh, you shouldn't be on serious left, blah, 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 blah. What do you mean I shouldn't be on serious left? I'm as left as you'll find. But I, does that mean as part of being left, I have to agree with everything Obama does? You know? Yeah. And I have to buy into the whole uh, uh, democratic, uh, 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 what, uh, what could we call it? Uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm punchy tonight. <laughs> I had all the air all blown the in my talk. ear. What? The better word. What? All the democratic, you have to buy into all the democratic, or if you're a Republican, mm-hmm. all the Republican talking points yeah. of all yeah. aspects yeah. of the platform, yeah. in other words. In other yeah. words, you're not a good Democrat unless blah, 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 blah. Well, no. Yeah. No. I mean, you know, whatever happened. I'm a free thinking American citizen, usually my response. You know what I miss? Good old fashioned sexist jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I, or, you know, uh, take, uh, like, take a guy like, uh, uh, who was it? The guy with the violin, not Jack Benny, the other one, the bad Henry one. Henny Youngman. Oh, Henny Youngman. Henny Youngman. Mm. What was his big catchphrase? Take, take my, my wife, wife please. please. Take my wife, please. please. Do you think today he could get away with just that simple line, which was his catchphrase? Yeah, sure he could. I think he could, but it would be a smaller audience. That would. That's the thing. It's been become more segmented. Like I was just saying, you could you yeah. can find comedy like that still. It's just in smaller segments and geared to smaller well, audiences. Well, you see, I'll you, drop you a name too, Doug Stanhope. He does a lot of that. Jim oh. Jeffries. Jesus Christ, if you listen to Jim Jeffries, if you want sexist humor, it, mm-hmm. you know, and he fills houses, so mm-hmm. it's still, it, there's still a, an audience for it. Mm-hmm. Nick DiPaolo. Yeah. Uh, Bree mm-hmm. just wrote, another power hour of pure Trump bashing. Is that what we're doing here? How cute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he you know. deserves it. Okay, uh, let me see here. Hey, I thought he wasn't Adrian. a Trumper. Though. See, that's what we're voting for right there. Yes, that's what yes. we're voting for. She just got home. Say hi. Hi, Adrian. How was school? Is that <laughs> okay. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. She wants to say hi really quick. She just got home. So. Go, 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 go. We never mind her. I know. I know. She is. Why but no, you? I mean, um, um, the, the fact of the matter is that, uh, you know, we're, we're not... It's not a question of bashing Trump. I wish I had something good to say about him, you know. <laughs> and I'm t- I, 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 okay. Look, let's do this. We don't want Bree to be hurt by our show tonight. <laughs> uh, uh, let's, I'm gonna go around the panel. Every one of you, come up with something good about Donald Trump. Uh, okay. I pass. No, come on. You gotta come up with something. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. yes, I can. Okay. Said it before. And by uh, the way, as, I'm as, sorry, as, Brian. Go ahead, Brian. Uh, say, as far as his rhetoric goes, as far as Trump's rhetoric goes, uh, we should not be competing with Beijing or any other country. All oh, right. Well, I mean, uh, who says we're competing with Beijing? Uh, well... Uh, yeah. A lot of corporations, a lot of sports institutions like the NBA, for one, Disney for another. What do you mean competing? We're competing for film space and regard. Oh, no, in the no, context no, 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 no. Disney Corporation. No. We're, we're doing we're doing business over there. 
but that's not competing. We're competing in the marketplace for eyes and ears and things like They're that. They're filming a movie. They they can they there's plenty of places in the United States of America they can do it. Yes. Uh and and uh, what about exteriors? Well, that's what studio design is for, isn't it? No. No. Sometimes you you need a good location. I mean, many times we go to uh Spain to film stuff, and we go other places yeah. to film stuff. Uh, uh, Game of Thrones was done in Ireland because the uh, the backgrounds yeah. they had and the vistas they could use uh, were appropriate to the theme. Uh, and their CGI too. Well, but they, you know, sometimes I, I'm sick and tired of seeing CGI. You know, I mean, I, I like seeing a real background. P- plus, even though yeah. you use some of those areas, there's still lots of cgi in there you know yeah uh but i mean they use malta for instance for game of thrones a lot you know uh new zealand and then they augmented it with uh cgi and but i know happy- better than that, as far as i say rhetoric for a reason because i know he's is he's in the pocket of the chinese more so in the russians than you know, more so than who's most in other the, politicians. Who's in the, who's are, in the pocket? It's all bluster and bullshit. Who's in the pocket of the Chinese? Trump. Oh, Trump? Well, he has, a, no matter what he says, he still has a bank account over there. Uh, uh-huh. And, uh, you know, he, he's done business in China. His daughter still, oh, God, my throat mm-hmm. today. I saw a video of uh, him on the Letterman show num- a number of years ago where uh, Letterman was uh, talking to him about his clothing line or his tie line or and he said he hell. made it in china yeah and he said oh i don't like i don't like things made in china and he showed him the tie and it says what's say, what's it say on the label made in china yeah. <laughs> and check his hats check his yeah. mega hats the mega yeah. hats are made in china yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well the thing yeah. is that i uh excuse me if my if i seem to my throat seems to be going out but i, I just for some reason it's dry tonight but alex's hat yeah yeah, well, this one was made in China. <laughs> was literally made in China. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Alex says I look like Che Guevara with what I have on. It kind of looks like a red Chinese hat or whatever the fuck. This is a, <laughs> this is this is a red Chinese hat. It is. I bought it in uh, China. It this shit. I bought it in China. Yeah. What is that? Oh, that's your company. Yeah, it's coming to you. I'm not a hat guy, and my head's too big for oh, this. Oh, I would love it. I would love it. Yeah. yeah. I'll send you a little gift packet. Okay. But no, what I'm all I'm saying is, is that uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with, uh, you know, uh, shooting something in China. For instance, they did a movie called The Great Wall, and it was with Matt Damon, and they did it all in China so they could use The Great Wall as a backdrop, you know. So um, yeah, I, I don't know if that's as big a problem as. Uh, well, wasn't Disney, wasn't like some Disney executive kissing the ass of the Chinese government while at the same time the Chinese government is persecuting Muslim, the Muslim citizens? Well, that look, you have to, you, to begin with, uh, you know, if, if, we're, if we're going to be, go on that basis, almost every country has some kind of sin, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and, and we sometimes maybe have to separate uh, um, uh, business from that sort of thing. I mean, yes, I know the, the Muslims, what are the names of those Muslims? I forget the name of them now. Uh, but they were putting them literally in concentration camps. They call them education. Yeah, of course. Yeah, camps. Uh, look, China has never been uh, to this day a really democratic country, you know, and the communist hierarchy is afraid of losing power, so they hold on to it by any means necessary. Um, yet, they are also economically one of the biggest countries in the world. And so the question then becomes, do you then not do business with them? Or do you allow them to just have uh, do business with everybody else? You know, if we don't do business with them, India will do business with them. Any number of nations, Germany will do business with them. Everybody does business with them. Mm-hmm. So if we don't do business with them, we're not competing in the world market. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you know, I, uh, I, I guess I'm defending them because my wife takes a paycheck from the Chinese. Why is it that 40, when you work 40 hours a week in 2020, I'm working full time, 40 hours a week, mm-hmm. uh, you know where I'm going with this. Yeah. But, you know, 40 hours a week, 60, 70 years ago, without a college degree, one person working, namely, usually the man, mm-hmm. um, 
it could support an entire family. Why is that? Well, it's because uh, things have gotten more expensive. Uh, so much so that both people have to work in order to be able to get by. Uh, and, and, but, you know, when you're talking about the Chinese, let me say something. My wife works for the Chinese. She feels, and I feel watching it, that she's never been treated better by any employer in her life. Okay? All her, uh, all our um, uh, medical is paid for. We're, you know, they pay, write a check out every year for us to take top tier, best we can get. Okay? 100%. No, no ifs, ands, or buts, you know? Um, does, she spend, does she go out there for business for like months at a time, weeks at a time? How's that work? Uh, no, she doesn't go out there. She Once a year, she goes out for a <laughs> company meeting or did. They don't right now. Oh, yeah. uh, but, I mean, uh, she really has, uh, you know, they treat her great. And, and, and she's not a young chick working at the office. <clears throat> she's an old lady. And they don't care. The Chinese have no concept of that. Age, if you can do the job, you can do yeah. the job. And they love her, and they treat her well, and and it's good deal. Uh, you know. So, am I supposed to say the Chinese are horrible? No, you know. I see how they treat their employees, and it's pretty good. You know. So, yeah, we're opening up a factory there, and it'll be open uh, 2022 January. Mm -hmm. So, we already hired a director of manufacturing for that facility. And it's a woman, which mm -hmm. is, she's very intelligent, very smart, and, you know, no, no issue with that. Yeah. But, um, so I'll be going over there quite often. So it'd be really interesting to see how that, and then India also see okay. how different cultures. Okay. Are. So we got one thing mm -hmm. out of Brian. Okay. Uh, 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 about Trump. Come on, Brian, other Brian, you got to have something, something good you can say about Donald Trump. He's a monster. There's nothing good to say about. Him. Yeah. You, you, you uh, well, know, one one thing I one thing I've been thinking about is, I mean, this whole pandemic stuff at the beginning. You know, when he didn't respond and, and he knew stuff and all that stuff. But you know, I'm getting to believe now the stuff that he's not doing now, when everything is going sideways again, is mm -hmm. even more you know, more hideous than than the stuff that he did at the very beginning. Yeah. Because he he's, he's definitely going against everything. And everything is climbing. All the numbers are there, and and he just doesn't care. Yeah, they've admitted that they're not going to do anything to control the right. virus. They've done. They've given yeah. up. They're just going to let Americans die. Yeah. Well, well, I'm, I'm, th th I wanna, justice down our throat. I'm thinking <laughs> here. First of all, <clears throat> if I had something good to say about Trump, it would be that over the last four years, he's given me endless material. Yeah. <laughs> Low hanging fruit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's given me endless material. And, mm. and uh, you know, I mean, uh, they did a thing on Saturday Night Live where a bunch of people were going, I'm voting for Biden because he blah, 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 blah. And I don't want Donald Trump. I'm voting for Donald uh, Biden. And they got about four people saying that. And all of a sudden, one of them goes, But, you know, I'm going to miss him when he's gone because I'll have nothing to talk about the next day. It's going to get dull. It's going to get dull. Mm -hmm. And then another one says, yeah, yeah, what are we, what are we going to do? What's Rachel Maddow going to talk about? Right. You know, they went on with all these things right. and going, gee, what are we going to do without Trump? Get a hobby. <laughs> There's yeah. danger in that. Yes, yes, Charlie. Yeah. The worst part about Trump is that he has been uh, what, fomenting violence among, among his followers. When he loses, I'm afraid that yeah. these militias are going to come out and start shooting people well, randomly. I have, I, I'm worried about exactly the same thing. Acts of domestic terrorism. But my question is, if, let's say, he wins, do you think there's going to be rioting? I think there will be some. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think no matter who wins, there is going to be, a, I think it's going to be the rioting on their oh. part is going to be more dangerous than the rioting on our part. Okay. Yes, Robert. Yeah. I want to go back to the, uh, the, the comment in the chat. Um, wasn't that same individual on the show Friday and got all up in everybody's business wearing that he was not a Trump fan, that he was an quote unquote, open minded individual. <laughs> well, for somebody that's not a Trump supporter, he sure kisses an awful lot of ass. 
Definitely. You know, like every comment he makes is pro-Trump. And then he comes out with these whiny little complaints about Biden. Oh, Biden didn't say Senate. He said senator. You know, like he's he's definitely losing it. You know, like, come on. I would admire you more if you came out and said, I support Donald Trump. OK, great. That's your right. But don't play it both ways and try to act like you don't support him. And yet every little thing you say is pro that guy, you know, be Mm -hmm. one or the other. Yeah. Uh, Can I mention that the other night we were doing the show and all of a sudden I noticed that Robert was gone. Uh, You you had a problem with what was going on, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah, I did. Well, explain, explain it to the. Group. Well, it's kind of going to bash somebody, but I, I, I think I'm tired of listening to civet cat stories and and yeah. <laughs> growing fucking lemongrass. And there was a point at which we were getting a tour of the garden and the toads and all like this. And I thought to myself, oh, I've got a fucking hundred books in this house. I'm aching to read. There are better uses for my time. I'll just quietly slip away well i think what the he problem can... is is that this particular individual when he comes on uh, i don't know if anybody knows what the word upstaging actually means yes, yes. we always yeah. think of it as being that you're trying to be the center of attention but in theater mm-hmm. parlance it means that it was always known that the person who stood upstage got the focal attention of the audience more than the person who was downstage mm-hmm. near the apron of the stage uh, but you can um, upstage people in any number of ways, and when you're out there working in your garden, that's upstaging everybody else who is rather static. Mm-hmm. Well, in all due fairness, I did a little bit of that uh, two and a half, three years ago when I would drive Well, along. no, but you, you but, wanted yeah, to be but, part of the program, so you did it from your car, and that's understandable. But you weren't Brian, like... You didn't, you didn't call attention to, look how I'm driving, you know? Yeah. True. on the wheel like yeah. so and you were just in that particular location but you were still static and you yeah. weren't deriving you know some kind of attention I, I mean ray for instance would sometimes call while he was walking his dog or dropping okay and but he <laughs> would add things now and then to the to, to what was happening mm-hmm. and it really was i i just felt feel that with 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 uh, our that guy we're talking about he was upstaging you know, and taking yeah, focus, right. if people were watching on, on the screen, taking focus off of other people, even if they were talking. So, but I just, I just wanted you to get that out because I, I, you know, I, I respect you as a panelist and I, I feel bad if you feel uncomfortable. Okay. Cause I want you here to say what you feel, mm. you know, when you got to say it, you know, So uh, his comments are interesting when he, you know, when he sits and takes part in discussions, that's great. But, you know, like, I I really don't give a fuck what you're eating for lunch. You know, (laughs) know, to be honest, I I always kind of turn it around and I Mm -hmm. say to myself, what if I went out in my backyard and started pointing to the various, you know, flora and fauna would he sit and listen to me? And I'm willing to bet solid money that, you know, he would lose interest immediately. Well, what well, if, I, what if, what if on this program I started masturbating? <laughs> Tubin. I, I, they, now Tubin. Have a, they now have a term for that. Tubin. Doing a Tubin. What? That's yes, the yes, yes, Brian. The former mayor of New York. Brian? Well, there was a. Uh, I don't know if I should say this, but when he would, this person, you know, you hear go to the airport, he would, but he would like leave it on, not mute the mic, and it would, the noise would drown out everyone else that was talking. Am, am I the only one that picked up on that, or, has other, or have other people picked up? Am I wrong here? Oh, we know. Okay. Oh, yeah. Because I was thinking to myself, okay, so it, it is true, because I was thinking to myself, Unless there's like two or three or goddamn an orgy going on, and there's a bunch of people fucking in the background, and I can hear them, I can hear them, uh, you know, moaning and whatnot. I don't want to hear any of that shit because right. I'm listening to say Rob, I'm listening to Jeff, I'm listening to Charlie, exactly make a point. Yeah, and exactly. I want to hear only them. 
And Brian, back to you driving in the car, you were keeping up with the flow of the conversation. You know what yeah. I mean? Like you weren't taking the conversation into your own personal tangent. Right. And that's the part I guess I object to is this is a show where we each give and take, and but there's a flow and a rhythm to it. And when you suddenly put up your goddamn cell phone to show a picture of some woman in t- Thailand somewhere it's just like wait a minute where did this come from well the only time it actually worked is when he would go through the mall yeah and all the gorgeous <laughs> women that were in that mall I mean, yeah you know but you know uh-huh. I just I I just feel that you know that only goes so far mm-hmm. you want to join the conversation do what everybody else does mm-hmm. here sit in front of the camera uh, and and care about joining the conversation yes uh, yeah yes Jeff when 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 Robert left, which is was it yesterday or the day before, I can't remember, but there was somebody else who came and only stayed a few minutes and then left. Hmm. And it's the guy who from uh, California who used to come all the time. Kevin he was always running Kevin. and Kevin Stomper? Stomper? The truck driver? No, 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 no. no. There's a guy who would go outside running and exercising. Oh, Ray. And Ray go Renati. To the gym Ray. And... Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, but he still wanted to join in on the conversation. Yeah, but he was in, and but he yeah. kind of got frustrated and left. Well, he still calls every now and then. Yeah. No, I like him. I like him, uh, especially in uh, Rob Ofano. I haven't heard from him in a while. Well, Rob, Rob doesn't want to call. He says he is, mm. he is fed up with not the show. But fed the up politics. with just the politics. He is just, he doesn't, it's just. He's frustrated it, with the life. It, well, it, it, it causes too much irritation to him. Yeah. And I like paying attention to political stuff too, but it's starting to, I mean, I'm, here's the other thing. Yeah. These damn grifters, especially left, right, I don't care. But, you know, I'm still a registered Democrat. I'm going to register, re-register as an independent soon. But I'm getting all these text messages and all these emails. And, and you know what? Leave me to fuck alone. I've had enough. <laughs> so, you know, on that regard, as far as uh, Mr. Alfano is concerned, I can't say I blame him there. Not, not yeah. one bit. Yeah. Oh, Bree writes, okay, I got the message. Bye. Uh-huh. Okay. Give him a let's, show. Yeah. Him and Phil. Don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. Let Bree and Phil have a show. Yeah. yeah. Give, him a, give him a show. Give him a slot. Um. <laughs> You know, well, I also got upset with Bree uh, the other the other day when he started going after me because he insinuated that yeah, yeah. about about uh, about Phil and Phil. and that the situation was that oh well I I scared Phil away and blah 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 nothing yeah. could be further from the truth mm-hmm. nope. you know and uh, and and uh, Phil and I are still friends uh, you yeah. know I mean we don't communicate much but we're still friends. And uh, I, I didn't like his attitude of, of just trying to insinuate that, oh, well, that's why you lost Phil, because he couldn't stand the way, blah, blah, you, blah, blah, blah. No, that wasn't it at all, you know. No. Wasn't I, it resented, all. I'm, I resented that, but I also resented when he went off on his little tangent and said that, you know, I, I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm an open-minded individual. I don't criticize every little thing he does. And I thought, well, that's the implication that none of us here who bash Trump are open-minded individuals. You know, like I, I, I can't be both open-minded and also criticize this guy. You know, that's that's just bullshit. Yeah, uh, uh, Brian. It's a dovetail with what uh, Rob, uh, uh, Mr. Natal said. Um, apologies if I'm mispronouncing your last name, but. Uh, hmm. Be, there's there's a conservative who is independent, says he's independent, and based on all the times he's participated, I believe him. Of course, you know who I'm talking oh. about, Mr. Patrick Blazer. Oh, yep. yeah, I believe yeah. him. He no. is it. He is. He doesn't kiss Trump's ass. Patrick. Is, than he Patrick w. is. Bushes. Patrick is totally creditable. Oh yeah. yeah. Just yeah. like I'm more. Every day that passes, every every time I've watched the news on YouTube and other alternative I mean, sources, Patrick's, and Pat- also mainstream, Patrick's, I become more of an independent yeah. liberal. Patrick so. started with me on Sirius XM. He used I remember. to call the show all the time, and I said to him that at that time, I said, I really like you because you're, you're, you're a reasonable conservative. 
you know you were doing that thing that fit with the uh faith healer water right? yeah yeah oh yeah. that was great. i remember that yeah with i laughed my fucking peter, ass with off peter, pa- peter pop off yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah pop off that's a good name for yeah. him yeah so you know i mean uh, but i uh also you know I, I it's difficult for me here because i have a sh- i'm just doing a show here and there are two things i'm reasons i'm doing it number one because i enjoy it i enjoy talking with you and having a discussion when anybody comes on that impinges on that, it suddenly makes me wish I weren't doing a show tonight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Because somebody is difficult in uh, controlling. Uh, I describe it as you're driving down the street with a person drunk in the passenger seat, tugging on the steering wheel. Oh, God. I've been there. Huh? You know what I mean? <laughs> Ubering, yeah. E- 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 Ubering. <laughs> Is that what it's called? God. Uh, but but you know what I'm saying, that that I I just I don't need that. You know I just want to have a nice conversation with you guys. You know, mm. and I and in most cases with the people we have here, it's always civil. You know, and you add Tony to that, and you add Kevin to that, and you add Patrick to that, and we got a whole bunch of other people mm. that call. Uh, John uh, John Larkin isn't here tonight, but when John calls. I mean, it's a nice bunch of people who all like each other, and nobody is begging for attention. Nobody is is vying for attention. Everybody's joining in on a conversation, Mm -hmm. and that's all I expect. And when somebody doesn't do that, it makes it difficult for me because I've got to keep... uh, It's my job to keep the car on the road, okay? And uh, so, you know... um, Hell, I once had a person in San Francisco I worked with who, uh, and we finally got her straightened out, but she used to come in in the morning sometimes. She got so drunk the night before she woke up and she was still drunk. Have you ever known people <laughs> like that? You know? And, and they want another beer. Yeah. And and, <laughs> and, and, and and as I described, it was like, like her tugging on the steering wheel for three, four hours. And it made it more difficult for me because I had mm-hmm. to keep the ship afloat, you know? I couldn't just let it go like that. So, you know, uh, just, all I'm saying is I want people who have respect for all of you as well. That's all, you know. So so back to bashing Trump. Here's the news. Okay. John Q. Public lost his job to COVID. His wife, Mary Q. Public, is in the hospital with COVID. Yeah. Their son, Johnny Q. Public, had to quit college because there's no longer any money. Mm-hmm. Their daughter, Jane Q. Public, um, is now with pre-existing conditions and her father has no health care. But Sudan and Israel are cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is yeah. that a meme? Mm-hmm. This is, you know, like this is his fucking strategy to win in the election. Come on. I guarantee you a week before that happened, he thought Sudan was sinus medication. I know it. <laughs> <in> my- <laughs> I'll tell you something. I, 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 think, I think where Trump made his biggest mistake was if I were president right, and I were me. running for re-election this year and the coronavirus hit, I would use that to just absolutely mm-hmm. put myself on the map and endear myself to everybody by taking charge of that situation yeah. Yeah. and doing something he, about it. He bungled that. He bungled it. Just... And I think it's because he had no concept of how you handle a situation like this. And I went on record as saying, if it weren't for coronavirus mm-hmm. and his bungling of it, that uh, he, he would be giving Biden the run for his money. In oh, fact, absolutely. I told people that at my workplace, pre-COVID lockdown, that when Biden looked like he was going to get the nomination, well, that, he, well, don't, he, I said to him, don't he, be surprised if he loses. He keeps saying how good the economy is, but all he's mm-hmm. looking at is the stock market, which, by the way, yeah. right now is down considerably. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But, he, he, you know, um, he made a big deal out of that and how all oh, the economy is wonderful. Well, no, the fact is that if you had gotten this corona thing under control, the economy would be good would and be people great. would be working and the unemployment rate would be down. But because you didn't pay attention to it, the whole fucking country fell apart. Yeah, uh, uh, Jeffrey had his hand up first and then Robert. No, I'm, I'm oh, okay, Robert. 
I, back to the Sudan thing. He made this big thing in the Oval Office about Sudan and Israel. They quickly, within a half hour, showed video of people in Sudan rioting in the streets, burning Israeli flags. The Sudanese don't want any kind of coalescence with Israel. The reason why Sudan agreed to try to make nice is because the Americans threw up at them, we'll take you off the harboring terrorist list, therefore allowing trade between our two nations. But the actual Sudanese don't want anything to do with the Israelis. So this was all a hmm. sham too. Well, I mean, you know, uh, it, 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 he didn't do much of anything. No, no. You know, he didn't do much of anything. Uh, uh, yeah, I got Israel to sign an accord with uh, with Sudan, but I don't even know what that accord is. It's it's an agreement, but you know, you can agree to a lot of things that aren't yeah. binding or Whoopty shit. Yeah. In other words, yeah, yeah. it doesn't Whoopty even shit. open up full diplomatic uh, ties. It's just but an I, agreement. I don't even think he had anything to do with it. No, he had nothing to do with it. No. <laughs> Israel is I'm still trying to I'm still trying to think of, of something decisions. positive I can say about Trump and I I have to argue back of that person who wrote that that you can't say something good about somebody who t you don't admire you know that on no level gets your admiration I've had a lot of people that I've disagreed with uh, politicians and so on and I still had a certain level of respect for them uh, yep. you know uh, as 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 even though we were enemies, as an enemy, I respected. Okay. Didn't Trump, Trump also make though? I think I this is my second uh, thing since nobody else. But uh, didn't he make some headway into you know treating parolees or you know you know better than what they've been treated? Like I, I can't articulate it any further than that. But. Um, you're, you're talking about the the parole thing that he, uh -huh. he yeah that he helped. He, yes, was, there were only I think 32 uh, paroles he granted. That's all. Yeah, that's all. And, and there are a lot of people in prison right now who shouldn't be there. All right, um, you know. So he so he did that. That that's wonderful. You know, it's probably something anybody should have done. And then on the other hand, he pardons assholes like uh, Arpaio yeah. and uh, yeah. Dinesh D'Souza. So. Yeah. Yeah, and also in Florida, tries to go beyond the law to get uh, felons from having the right to vote, even though that was signed wow. into law in Florida. Well, no, so, they can have the right to vote if they've paid off all their bills. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which, which so just, Bloomberg just went in there. Bl Bloomberg went in there, and I think with something like a couple of thousand uh, uh, people who were. Uh, uh, I think it was over thirty thousand people. Was it thirty thousand? He paid off yeah. their he paid off their bills. Yeah. Well, you well. know, it was it was legal fees and things like that, and fines they had been given by the court and so on. Well, DeSantis has been acting like Trump's bitch anyway. So. Oh, for sure. Oh yeah, An another case an of another state, uh, Charlie, that where the. the the, the governor has done such a terrible job with the coronavirus yeah. that he, people are dying like flies. I mean, I had Albert on the other day, and he's living in Florida, and, you know. He, is Disney World open again, or have they no, stayed? Open? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Maybe, uh, Disney's let a lot of people <laughs> off. Oh, yeah. You know. Hospitality is. Well, because is hospitality, but over. also the films. Where are they going to play their movies? Yeah. You know, they Vegas. Got, they're, they're renting the out the. The AMC is renting out the movie theater for ninety nine dollars. Yeah, you can rent out the whole movie theater for ninety nine dollars, but they have movies like Shrek and you know all these old movies. <laughs> yeah, wow. Hey, listen, uh, it's Nuts. been fun. It's been fun tonight, and you you helped me on a night when I was made uh, inordinately dizzy uh, on oh. purpose. Uh, you know, uh, I was saying that to the doctor that this is the first time I've had anybody blow in my ear for years. Yeah. So, no <laughs> you know, it was, oh, boy. Uh, we're coming on tomorrow night and we're going to do this just to make, <laughs> <laughs> just to make me feel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, anyway, Jeff, good having you here tonight.
Uh, uh, and the same thing true with Charlie, and the same thing is true with uh, Robert, who we think the world of, and Brian, who is wonderful, uh, Brian Neary, and then Brian Ludwig, who we uh, uh, admire and respect, uh, and uh, wish some of the other people had called tonight, but, you know, who knows, it's, it's Tuesday, what can I say? Anyway, the rest of you, uh, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a wa big wave goodbye back at you, okay? And there they go. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, let me just get rid of them here so we don't have them online. Listen, uh, uh, Jack Bishop is next. He's here with The Intersection. He does his whole thing uh, on Skype. And the uh, Skype uh, ID that you use to call him is GabNet Live. Call him. It's a good show. It's a really good show. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow night at, uh, let's see here, at 8.30. It's a sports show with the franchise MC. A good little sports show. I wish he did it more often. Uh, and uh, then uh, that will be followed at uh, 10.30 by me once again. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And by the way, be safe out there and wear a mask. <laughs>